praise y'all. Thank you, Father God. Hello. I'm back with another word. And this one is coming from the book of Joel, the second chapter, uh, the 22nd through the 32nd verses. And uh, the Holy Spirit gave me this word the, the other day. And I apologize for just releasing it. But, you know, maybe it was a time for me to release it then. I don't know. But I thank him that we doing it today. You know, it's getting done today. So thank you, Father. All right. So I'm going to start actually at the 21st verse of Joel, the second chapter. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. So, you know, things going to start popping. Verse 23, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the form of rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the form of rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Okay, so now, how can we tell when the first month is, you know, this uh, America is is based on the, the Gregorian calendar, but... The Bible is based on the Hebrew calendar. And so, when it's talking about times and seasons, it's going by the Hebrew times and seasons. So, the the first month of the Hebrew calendar is the month of Nisan, which uh, is typically around springtime. Well, that's when it is. No, not typically. That's when it is. It's around. It's springtime when the, the season of spring is here. When when things are when the when the earth is is yielding her fruit. You know when it, when uh the seeds that had been planted start to bring forth in, in bud and, and the earth is coming to life again with with the fruits of what was labored with with. The flowers, with with new trees, with with new grass, with whatever was planted, and so it's typically around the middle of March through April is when it happens, and it's also uh, when Passover takes place around like the middle of March, so around the fifteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, and uh, so. This is the time frame that he has given us with this word. He says, Be glad, ye children of Zion. That's us. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the form of rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the form of rain, and the latter rain in the first month. So see, he says, you know, he, he's giving us some rain, the the former rain moderately, you know. He he's blessing us now. But around that month of Nissan, it's really gonna start raining. Blessings are on top of blessings. The former rain, it says, the latter he gonna cause for us to come down the rain. So the blessings that that's in that time, for that time, and then the former rain, and then the latter rain. All in the first month of Nisan. 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. So, like, it's harvest time then. This this was, like, will actually give you a time frame. He's giving us a time frame. The floor shall be full of wheat. And it won't be no... No famine for his children. Because they're going to have plenty of, of grain. 
and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great arm in which I sent among you. So you don't, that's why it's not good to always say when when something bad happens to you or or something's going on that you know you you're going through trial and tribulation that it's the devil because sometimes it's God. It's God sent that that thing among you. He said it right here in this word. Like everything is his. The earth and the fullness thereof. So when he tell something to do, that's what it, that's what they're going to do. That's what it's going to do. You know, if he say something, that's what's going to be done. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So all these things that eat away, you know, that 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 we don't like, that may that that are uncomfortable to us. You know, sometimes he will send those uncomfortable things and things that we don't like among us. But it's for a season. Verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, which is Yahuwah, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. Just me. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will i pour out my spirit so this is like revival this is revival time like god is gonna start pouring out his spirit upon all flesh so it is fixing to be some of some spiritual awakening going on, some spiritual reviving, uh, some real watering of our spirits. You know, re- a refreshing time is coming. All all that rain is it, going to re- bring some spiritual refreshment as well. Verse 30. Well, verse 29, I'm going to read that one. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. So see, that just about cover everybody that's in him. You know, as long as you are in him. And, 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 and you know, some of you don't know you're in him. Because you might not be, you might not have a made up mind yet, but if he has chosen you. If he has a calling upon your life, he used who he wanted you. He used the donkey to speak to Balak. You know what? So, he could do what he want. He used a, a, a bear to kill them children that was mocking the prophet Isaiah. Whatever he want to do, that's what he going to do. And he, so he used whoever he wanted to use when he wanted to use. But he says, your sons, your daughters, old men, young men, servants, and handmaids. You know? That by covers it. <laughs> and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, Yahuwah, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, 
and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. All right, so what I really want to hit on, though, is the characteristics of those things that you went through to let you know if if you pass that season or or if you are in that season now you know look forward to rejoice if you if you done been through it and came out of it and and rejoice if you in it because you about to come out of it but so the number one we're going to talk about first is the canker worm the characteristics of the canker worm because you wonder why he, like, he, he don't just say things for nothing. It's a reason for everything that he say. Canker worms consume the buds and leaves of trees. And can be a major pest. They will have you looking fruitless. And like a twig instead of a tree. Canker worms will have a tree looking naked. They eat the fruits, the the leaves and the buds. So they eat the 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 new thing. They they eat the first fruits, you know, that's that's coming forth. The the buds, the growth. They come to stop the growth. And they want to stop any signs of life because leaves are signs of of life. You know, they want to stop that. They don't don't want... So anything you've been going through that's been trying to stop you and and hinder your growth and and stunt you and, and it's got you looking like what you not, you know, you a child of the Most High. You a child of the King. And the earth is his in the fullness that uh, he on all the silver and gold is his. He on the cattle on the thousand hills. And he on the hills and the and the cow, all the cattle. Like everything is his. So you've been uh, adopted into a royal priesthood. So you know you're not in poverty. You know you you not uh lack is not your portion. You're a fruitful tree. And you and you are to live in the, the lightsome land. But the canker worm I have you looking. Bear. The canker worm will have you out here looking like a stem instead of a tree. A limb. A, a naked bush. I have you looking dead. Useless. I have you looking like something that you are not. Okay. The second one is the locust. The locust cause extensive damage to crops. See, the locust come to attack your harvest. The uh, you you when it's harvest time, you know that is you 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 are uh, you already see the fruits of your labor of all your hard work that you done put in, and so you see it coming forth. You see it coming to pass. You see it getting ripe and ready, and, and it's almost time for the picking. It's all it's almost time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And then here come the locusts, swooping in, swooping down on your harvest to eat it up. And when they, they don't just swoop in and just want eat a few, they, they cause extensive damage, you know? So something like that could be, uh, just... I don't want to say, like, you know, if it resonates within your spirit, you, you'll recognize the locust. 
Because it, it could come into the form of, say, your finances had started looking better. Your financial outlook was finally looking good. You you had you started a business and then you you started seeing the fruits of your labor. You you started seeing all that hard work and and, and sleepless nights, you know, was starting to yield and and, and look like you finally was gonna be able to Rejoice in the fruits of your your harvest. Enjoy some of your harvest. And then here come a trial or tribulation come to want to take whatever profit that you might have attained, want to come and eat it up. And it seems like it's one thing after another. You know, it could be one thing after another, one thing after another. That is an example of the locusts. Cause locusts is a bunch of things. Like it, it just when you, if you ever heard yourself saying, if you ever heard yourself say, uh, it one thing after another. It just seemed like every time I turn around, it's something else. You know, that is could be an example of the locust coming. Cause it's like a swarm. A locust, they they come in swarms. So it's just a bunch of things that uh, hit you at once. You know, that's an example of the locust. Okay, the palmer worm. Palmer worms suddenly appears in great numbers. They just pop up. And they feed on the leaves of fruitful trees. Okay, so... I'm going to read that again. Palmer worms just suddenly pop up in great numbers. And they feed on the leaves of fruitful trees. You can be doing good. You can be producing fruitful. All the fruits of the spirit. And then all of a sudden, bam. Here come the palmer worm. Try if if you not prayed up where you supposed to be. Here come the palmer worm can come in and and and, and want to feed on the fruit of your faith or want to feed on the the fruits of your uh your spiritual your 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 love your charity, you know. They want to come and. and and eat up on that end so you, you start feeling like you can't give because things done got tight. The palm the palmer worms eating up your fruit. The number four is the caterpillar. The caterpillar is a worm like larva. Of a butterfly or moth. But it is also. A person who preys on others. Or an extortioner. I bet you didn't know that. I bet when you. When you heard caterpillar. You automatically thought of the worm like larva. Yeah. They do eat on the leaves of trees. You you see. And. And. Some of them just hang out in trees, cause they, that's where they go to to transform, to to go through their metamorphosis. Some go get in trees and 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 that's where they cocoon. They make their cocoon so that they can transform into the butterfly or moth. So for for some trees, when you, if you see a caterpillar, it's not always bad, because. Transformation is happening. You know, you got to get up on, you got to get up and, and, and discern that tree. You got to get up close and see what's going on. It, it, is this caterpillar eating the leaves or is it just come for transformation? But a person who preys on others or an extortioner, 
It don't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. You see what you see. You know when it ain't right. That's them people that come in and and, uh, and use you for your fruits. Those are those people that come and just want to take from you. Those are people that want to come and, and, and starve you. Have you gone without lack and, and, and will force you to put yourself in lack. Because of them. And so then your tree not looking. You a tree that's not looking as fruit. Now you starting to look bare. And extortioner. Is a person who practices. The use of obtaining benefits. Through coercion. They, they manipulate you. So see this is why. If you are around a manipulating person, don't matter if it's male or female, that's it's a person that cause they both can be. You got to get away from them. You got to get away. Because this is the caterpillar that will eat the fruit of your tree. And you are the tree. You are. In Isaiah 60, 61. We are compared as, as living trees. And a manipulator will have you, will put you in lack. A manipulator will have you starving. A manipulator will have you thirsty. A manipulator will leave you dry. Because you giving so much, you don't have nothing left for yourself. It ain't even nothing in the reserves. You stay around too long. This is also, you know, a characteristic of the narcissist. In a natural sense, it is a criminal offense. But guess what? It's also... A criminal offense in the spiritual. They stealing from you. They taking from you. And they using manipulation. Which is a form of witchcraft to do it. Now. I went over to. Let's see. Joel, the first chapter, 4 through 7. You know, I'm going to get ready to close. These scriptures relate. It says, that which the palmer worm, this is verse verse 4 of chapter 1. That which the palmer worm has left has the locust eat. And that which the locust has left has the canker worm eat. And that which the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eat. Now this is in verse 4. Now do you hear this? So by the time all this has happened, guess what? They say, awake ye drunkards and weep. And howl all ye drinkers. Of wine because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the cheek teeth of a great lion. Seven, he has laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. 
He has made it clean bare and cast it away, and the branches there are made white. Woo! Lord, have mercy on us. You know what this is saying? This is saying. So, what started out as a tree, the palmer worm done came. I told you what the palmer worm do. The palmer worm just suddenly appear in great number. That, that, that's some things that just popped up. You know, and feed on the leaves of the fruitful trees. So, you started out in good standing. With the fruits of the spirit. And exhibiting the fruits. Everybody can see it. In your life. And then. Here come the palmer worm popping up. The things that just suddenly appear. Things that. That can catch you off guard. And then it says. You know. After those things Lil. Then bam. Here come the locusts. You know. You you done. You still had seed. You had planted. You was on good ground. So the the palmer worm came in and, and ate the fruit that was on the tree. You know, it, it didn't mess with the roots and and, and the, the the seeds that had, you know, planted. That had fallen from your tree. So the things in the ground were still coming forth. So you, you like, okay, you know, I, I'm about to bounce back. You know, because I'm finna produce some more fruit. You know, it, the, the palmer worms got me that time, but I'm, I'm here I come with my new fruit. And bam, here come the locusts. Because, see, they pop up on the harvest. They wait till it, it's time for the crops to come in. And then that's when the locusts want to pop up. And so it say, and then that, and then that which the locust has left, here come the canker worms. Now remember, I told you the canker worm, they eat the buds and the leaves of the trees, and and are considered a major pest. That's the stuff getting on your nerve. Just seem like it just won't stop. That's something that had you vexed. It rub your spirit the wrong way. Because a pest. Be a pest will get on your last nerve. <laughs> like some, some people say. It'll make you almost want to lose your religion. <laughs> you know. Those are characteristics. Of the canker worm. So now you done been attacked. Your fruit done been attacked. So now you just now you don't even have no fruit on your tree. Imagine seeing a tree with, with fruit on the apple tree. Alright. Something came up, popped up, ate your apples off. Cool. You still an apple tree. You still got seeds and stuff, you know? So bam. I'm a I'm a that's okay. I got some more apples coming. My season gonna change, and and I'm I'm about to produce some more fruit. My my all the other the seeds that's been falling from me about to come up, and and here come it's gonna be so many apples. I'm gonna have more apples than I had when I started. I'm gonna have my apples and some more. <laughs> that's growth. And then bam, here come the locusts. Uh uh. Because they want to come in when they see the crops about to come in. Oh, look at all them apples. Then they want to come and eat all the apples. And then they go. <laughs> the canker worm. The canker worms come in. to say, no, okay, yeah. Yeah, apple tree. Now we got you for your apples and guess what? We gonna try to stop you from make from make sure you don't bud no more apples. We gonna make we trying to make sure you don't see no more apples. Cause now we sending something to try to eat your leaves and your buds. 
your new fruit. If you think you can, you going to do it again. We going to try to stop you. And then it says, and then that which the canker worm has left, here come the caterpillar. Here come the manipulators. Here come the coercioners. Here come the, the criminals. The spiritual criminals. And natural too. And the word says, so much so to in verse 7. The Most High said, he had laid my vine waste to what now? What was, you know, the fruit in my vine ain't even looking like, this don't even look like my, my orchard. Don't even look like my apple orchard no more. You say, because... They done bark my fig tree. You know when you bark something? It's when... Now they stripping you for the brown part on you. On the tree. He said and he had made it clean bare. And cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. They done come in and... and scrape you to the white meat. Not only now is your bark showing, they got your your bark showing to the white meat. Now you know when something busts you down to the white meat, that's not first degree. That's not even second degree. That's on the third level of your epidermis. That's on that third level of your skin. That's a deep wound when it go to the white meat. That's when you you get to pain. That's a wound. That's when something's wounding you. And that's what these manipulators do. That's what them caterpillar manipulators do. Them caterpillar criminals. I want you to remember from this day. From the time you hear this word. That a caterpillar can represent transformation. But it also can represent a manipulating person. Look it up if you don't believe me. An extortioner. Somebody who trying to get out of you what you got. And they're trying to do it illegally. They're trying to take it by force. They're trying to make you give it up. Even though you don't want to give it up. They're trying to do it with blackmail. They're trying to convince you. Something that'll try to convince you you're not an apple tree. You ain't nobody. 